Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Would you like to introduce yourself to everyone? Yeah, for sure. So my name is Dana. My pronouns are she, her. Um, I'm 26 years old and uh, Jess and I have been longtime friends for many years now. And uh, she just asked me to come online here and talk a little bit about vegetarianism and veganism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I've been super interested in that. Um, I mean, I've been watching a lot of documentaries, obviously, because of COVID, but it's different trying to find the perspective from like someone I know, which I know you've been a vegetarian for how many years now? Yeah, it's been like, oh my goodness, it's, I think it's been like 13 years now because I went vegetarian when I was like 13 and I'm 26 now. So that must be 13 years now, like half my life. Wow. Yeah. It's been a long time. Yeah. Um, Yeah. It's been overall pretty good there. I think the reason that I went vegetarian originally when I was 13 is because I was like a teenager trying to form an identity and Mm -hmm. things like that. So that's kind of how that started. And then Over the years, um, the more research and things that I did, I eventually decided to go vegan in around 2015 or so, Um, just kind of slowly cutting off different things from my diet. And so now I've been vegan for a while now, and it's been good overall. (laughs) Has it been a pretty manageable lifestyle to be vegan? Yeah, um, I think most of it has just come with um, trying to find some sort of like recipes and things that you generally strive Mm. towards Mm -hmm. nowadays it's a lot easier than how it was when I first started because I think that veganism has become more mainstream Mm -hmm. so there are more restaurants there are more um food or sorry there's more animal uh, imitation kinds of things like yeah um, cheese and soy based cheese and all these other things so yeah when people often ask me like oh, how do you live without this? How do you live without that? It's like, I don't have to. I can just find an alternative. So yeah, there's yeah. a lot of alternatives. Um, I'm no, I'm not an expert in nutrition at all. Um, but just like when people do ask those questions, I kind of like cringe a little because there's always ways to get the nutrients you need. Exactly. Um, and it's my concern is more of a lifestyle change, right? Like that, I feel like that should be the biggest concern people have, not necessarily giving something up mm-hmm. or worrying about not getting enough of something. Yeah, exactly. So when yeah. you were cutting from vegetarian to to become vegan, how did that go? Like, I yeah. know you were cutting slowly, sorry. Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. So I think, first of all, what I started doing is generally I didn't really drink much any milk or anything like that and I've been drinking soy milk and things like that for a long time so that was pretty easy that's good and then it just came with like I think cheese was like the last thing to go <laughs> and um chocolate and like you know like <sighs> sweet milk yeah. chocolate <sighs> yeah I know I know so yeah I, I had to cut them out one by one and just kind of swerve over to like dark chocolate and you know oh like oh my goodness <laughs> and I feel like I don't know if it's just me but like Okay, I can kind of understand how my lifestyle might be able to fit ve- like vegetarianism, but I'm mm-hmm. scared that like I'll, I mean, I'll accidentally eat something with milk or eggs without doing the research, um, stuff like that. How do you deal with that? Do you have to research every single thing or do you kind of just go with the flow and try your best and then forgive yourself if something comes up? Yeah, I would say more of the latter. I mean, mm. you might make a mistake here or there when you're first starting out, and that's okay. You you do have to forgive yourself. Um, I know some people might be really like, oh, crap, I <laughs> went and ate this thing that I didn't read carefully enough, or there's yeah. a small little ingredient, things like that. But you know what? Like, nobody's perfect. You're going to make mistakes along the way. So, and I've definitely made those little mistakes mm-hmm. before uh, without even noticing things. But yeah, you know, you just kind of try your best and don't be too hard on yourself for sure. That's good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a lot of milk art- alternatives now and I've been pretty into oat milk lately. Me too. Yeah, it's good. It tastes yeah, like cereal milk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't good. know. And then there's macadamia nut milk and there's just so many that it is a lot, I guess a lot, like in a way, a lot easier because it's mainstream. Mm-hmm. How do you personally feel that like vegetarianism and veganism kind of became mainstream? Like, are you happy about it or is it kind of like, uh, it's like those TikTok dances where like you, you get annoyed with it. <laughs> trend. Everyone is talking about it and it's just like a temporary trend and no one will actually continue with it. Anything like that. 
Yeah, so I feel like it would be more of the former in this case. Okay. Um, for me, I'm happy that more people are trying different things and alternatives and things. And I think that these changes have become more of a um, progressive thing, like as our society progresses, I think that people are starting to realize now that we can find alternatives to our old ways of being. Um, because like, if you're going back historically, things like processed meats and processed foods and things like that started more in like the 50s, 60s when technology has progressed. Yeah. Because instead of like farming our food and like killing animals and creating, you know, food and packaging up, they were more doing processed things like sausages, things like that to make it easier. And they invented the microwave, all those things to yeah. make things easier. So now as we keep going, we keep creating more things to make our lives easier. Mm -hmm. And now we have um, like, meat alternatives like beyond meat and things like that that use a significantly less um, ecological footprint less water less land and all those things so I think if you're being you know progressive why wouldn't you want to take an alternative that is more ecologically friendly and more environmentally friendly you know what I mean so mm -hmm. I'm hoping that more of these things come out in the future and I know that lots of people who are you know set in their ways might have a problem with that um, like why would I want to eat a a food eaten in a make made in a petri dish kind of thing but no like you know it's we're going to make progress as we go along in in society so I'm very happy to see more people trying things out and I would encourage anybody to try it if they can you know anything small you can do makes a difference I think yeah um if anyone did want advice from you in terms of lifestyle or like a first-hand thing like would you be open to giving your email or your Instagram and they can just message you is that cool yeah, definitely. I'm cool. always happy to answer any questions. That's um, good. Given my years of experience in like a so long industry, like, I guess. <laughs> I just remember yeah. you being like, I was just shocked when I was a kid because like, I guess meat was always around me. And like, yes. obviously at the time, I feel like research and the Canadian food guide was so bad yeah. that like they would tell you if you don't have meat, you're screwed. Like, yeah. And the only alternative you can have is basically tofu. And it's like, yeah. What? And it's nice that it is mainstream because everything is um, changing. Uh, I do actually like the taste of the Beyond Meat burger from AW. There you go. Yeah, yeah, it's not terrible. And I mean, so how do you feel about like people eating something that's textured and kind of tastes like meat, but it yeah. isn't? And like, because like, so Aaron's perspective is like, why would you buy that if you like? if as in like how do I explain this sorry um so why would you buy something that tastes like meat when you're trying to avoid meat if that makes sense I don't know if that question makes any sense at all no it does yeah for sure I've seen a lot of comments about that and I've gotten yeah. questions from people about that as well I think that everybody goes vegan or vegetarian for different reasons right um for me the general top three reasons for people is either the ethical and moral implications of eating meat um, the environmental impact of it, which we already talked about a little bit, mm. and then the health impact of it. So there's three like main groupings of reasons that people go for. Some people may be for it only for ethical reasons. Like they think that um, eating a dead animal is not right morally or ethically. So therefore they want to find an alternative and that way they can eat that without having those, you know, um, emotional repercussions of that, thinking about that. And then there's some people who do it for like the health reasons, right? Just for example, cutting out red meat, as we know, red meat is not the best for you. Mm -hmm. So you have a way to enjoy that without having the actual animal that you're eating, right? So, and then also, again, like I mentioned, the environmental reasons, the ecological impact of it, the fact that like red meat production and land usage is like the main cause of deforestation, which a lot of people don't know, mm -hmm. um, looking at that. So those are the top three reasons for that, I would say. And you could extend that to you know, like, why would I want to eat this if it tastes like it? Well, I know that it's not the real thing for one thing and it tastes good. And, you know, that's, that's probably why I would go for that. Some people mm -hmm. also who are kind of doing that transition over, it's easier for them to go to what they know already. Like you could get like vegan chicken nuggets or whatever like that. You can still yeah, those enjoy those good. things. <laughs> yeah, they are good. Like they, they, they've progressed so well. It tastes like the real thing. And sometimes I can't even tell the difference. So Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I was actually going to talk about the different reasons why. And I'm mm -hmm. glad you kind of touched on that. Because, for example, um, like for myself, and always correct me if I'm wrong or anything like that. But like, because I grew up with meats and all of that, mm -hmm. I 
I guess I never really cared. I guess at the time when I was younger, I never cared that animals, like, I just thought it was normal that we had to eat animals because of, you know, hunter, gatherer, all that stuff that we learned, right? Especially in elementary or junior high. But Mm -hmm. now, like, as things progress, and I don't think I'm, like, environmentally friendly or really good at eating healthy, but it just seems, with all the videos and documentaries, it just seems like that's the most reasonable thing to go towards Mm -hmm. and I mean I I'm obviously sad when animals die but I felt like I don't want to sound insensitive or anything so just like let me know but I just felt like that reasoning didn't sink in with me as much Mm -hmm. as like this environmental kind of issue I don't know if that makes sense no yeah for sure like I I love animals but yeah yeah. sorry go ahead no yeah for sure I feel like again people have different reasons for that Mm -hmm. and also I feel like a major component of that is also the cultural reasons right Um, for example in your culture lots of people usually eat a lot of meat right it's a significant part of your diet so it's it's there's also an emotional component to that right because people are very I don't know. I feel like people are very emotionally t- attached to the foods that they like in their diet, things like that. Like even just as an example, my boyfriend the other day was like, oh, like I don't like peanut butter. And I was like, why do you don't like peanut butter? Like what's wrong with you? Right. It's it's so like emotional to, yeah, to yeah. have these different foods. And like and then also I feel like another thing is people feel very threatened when they're faced with facts and information because of that emotional response right like if I go up to you and I tell you about how animals are abused and things like that then your reaction is not going to be positive right you're going to feel this like ambivalence like oh yeah I love eating these certain foods but also I have to acknowledge the way that these animals are treated nobody wants to be faced with the truth right so and um, people again they're just so far removed from that reality like the reality of factory farming and things like this yes that (laughs) Like, you just have to go to the grocery store and pick up your food, right? You don't have to see it be killed or anything like that. So it's it's very jarring when you get that information. So, yeah, I wouldn't feel, you know, I understand where people are coming from when they have that emotional response to it. Mm -hmm. Like, I I mean, I've seen videos, obviously, and things are circulating way more. And I Mm -hmm. guess that is affecting me. But I think as a kid, I've just been so good at, like, you know, removing it because, I know for our food, like my, like Filipino food, you see the shrimp head, right? You see the fish head, you see the pig's head, all of that stuff. And it all has some cultural significance, but I think Mm -hmm. that might have numbed me, I guess, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Like, I feel really bad. Like I, I like, I love like animals and obviously my passion is like clearly not in that direction fully, Mm -hmm. but I guess because of how my culture is, I like blocked it out, like that animals were actually hurt and were actually Mm -hmm. eating someone's meat if that makes sense yeah and getting a dog like really like changed that for me too slightly Mm -hmm. because like having that emotional connection with an animal is like I've never experienced that in my life yeah and she's not really the reason why I'm switching but it's like it's just I don't know how to explain it but like now the like seeing animals get hurt like really hits hard like in the last two years because I have a dog like it's just yeah even like and cows are so freaking cute like (laughs) like, they're so cute and like I'm just trying my best and I think another thing that people think is like the meat's already there yeah yeah you know but then I realize like it's there because we keep buying it right yeah it's not like it's just there exactly Mm -hmm. the demand is huge and Mm -hmm. man like now it's like now because of the environmental impact it's like I'm feeling more inclined to hopefully go into vegetarianism Mm -hmm. and then hopefully slowly go into veganism, but that's going to be, it's going to be a process. (laughs) It'll be a while. It'll it'll take a bit, but I think that's a good start, right? What do you think? No, yeah, for sure. I agree. And yeah, it is difficult, right? Um, When you know more too about animals as well, like the fact that pigs and cows are like emotionally intelligent as well, just as much so as a dog, it makes it very difficult. And yeah. the question that a lot of people have is like, I mean, that vegetarians often pose is, you know, why love one, but not the other. And it, it makes sense, right? Like they're both sentient animals. They both have emotions, yeah. feelings, things like that. So yeah, it's hard when faced with that information. And I guess it just comes with processing it and examining your own moral values and things like that. Yes. And definitely I feel like vegetarianism is a good place to start and it doesn't have to be a, all together one okay I'm just cutting everything out all at once you can go gradually right like do like red meat first because that's the most 
both environmentally and health wise detrimental one to you oh, and then sure. just kind of cutting things out and see how you feel you know it doesn't have to be like a this day yeah. I'm starting no it's good yeah because I'm lucky that Aaron when he cooks he's very good like he tries to get as much I guess vegetables in it and we're like slowly good. cutting out like I told you we're cl- slowly cutting out red meat and I mm-hmm. think we're pretty good at that and I think we're not going to buy any meat products right now uh, we're just going to finish whatever we have that has meat nice um I just yeah watching the documentaries really hit like I I don't know if what I was saying earlier was like insensitive in the in the sense like with uh growing up being like ignorant to uh, cows and like pigs dying and all of that like yeah I just feel like it's hard for me to understand the the love for animals but then going and eating an animal and I, I don't want anyone to feel bad, but I, it's just been hitting so hard in the last two years. Yeah. Like, and it's the temptation is so real to buy the meat. It's like right there. Yeah. So easy. Like McDonald's just drive through, grab a yeah. Big Mac, whatever. Exactly. Right. So yeah. I guess my question is like, th- does that bother you when people say that? Like, I mean, I've been really trying um, to be better and I'm not like an, animal advocate or activist or anything like that but it does it's starting to hurt and that wouldn't be my main reason for vegetarianism but yeah Mm -hmm. like I don't know if this makes sense I'm just kind of babbling because I no no worries I'm so curious about this stuff and I'm just so excited because I I don't know I just I really want to do this and like Mm -hmm. obviously it's going to be a slow process but I also want people who are in my boat like especially in Asian culture Mm -hmm. eating meat um and all of that like how does how do you feel when people are like, you know, I love animals, I love this, and then they eat like a cow or something, you know, beef and stuff like that? Yeah. I feel like crap. Yeah. Nowadays. No, I mean, for sure. Like when I first started out, I felt very passionate about it. Yeah. So I was really offended at first for a while. But over the years, mm-hmm. you can, you kind of get desensitized to the same comments over and over. Like yeah. a lot of people love to be like, like even just on Facebook, there will be like a cute <laughs> animal video of a pig and some person in the comment would be like oh look at my bacon I love bacon like yeah okay I get it like relax like um yeah so it just people are much more insensitive than you are so like don't even (laughs) don't worry about it (laughs) I get so nervous when I say something wrong in general I'm learning and you know it's all about learning and I feel like I've been so insensitive my whole life in general and just ignorant about everything that I'm really open and hoping to learn about every single thing. So I do get a little nervous when I get insensitive. So that's why I was just making sure if that was insensitive or not. No, no worries. Yeah. I think you're coming from the right place. And even just the yeah. fact that you acknowledge that you might be coming across that way is a good thing. So, and also the fact that you want to explore it more, that you're already on the right track. So um, I think it just comes down to doing whatever research you can and watching more documentaries and things. Um, the main ones that I usually recommend to people um, in terms of like the environmental ones would be like Cowspiracy. Um, and there's Ooh. another one called Eating Animals that was really interesting that was more talking about factory farms and how it actually affects farmers and things like that. Um, and I'll then, put those in the description. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And the health related ones that I usually recommend there's one called what the health that is really interesting um talking about like the healthcare system and all these other things um there's also forks over knives that's another good one and then in terms of the ethical one uh I wouldn't really recommend this one but there's one called dominion on youtube that you could watch that has some images of factory farms I probably wouldn't really recommend that one but if anyone's really curious to see where their food comes from that's another option (laughs) Is it because it's, um, like, super real? It's very or? explicit. Yeah. yeah. It's very, <laughs> okay. It's very hard to watch. Yeah, I couldn't even Ooh. watch it. <laughs> okay. Maybe, yeah. yeah but I'll, if anyone, you know, is curious, then... <laughs> I'll put it there, and then I'll put a yeah. little thing that's, like, it's Disclaimer. explicit, so be careful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> disclaimer. Very disturbing. So, but, yeah, that's just the thing that I was saying, right? Like, people are just so far removed from it. You don't think about where your food comes from. Um, most of it is from factory farms, not, like, the cute little red barn farms that you see in tv and stuff like that right so yeah my goodness like especially now that I think it got worse because now that people especially in America have pigs as pets Mm -hmm. oh like they're so cute and like I'm hoping they're like they're okay and like I'm not sure the the reasoning behind domesticating them or anything like Mm -hmm. that but they seem happy uh, from my perspective and like just 
thinking about eating like a pet too it's like yeah. it gets worse and worse and worse and it's like yeah oh like I just yeah. feel so sad that's the again like that's the moral like ethical implications that you have to examine it's hard when you're faced with that you know kinds of feelings so I would say that's valid like <laughs> that's how I feel about it too and mm -hmm. that's why I made that kind of commitment to stopping it and also just kind of going the step further and going vegan because then I have that you know um I don't have that on my conscience <laughs> like thinking about where these things come from like eggs and things like that so yeah that's fair yeah. like especially mm -hmm. with all the like just videos that go viral it's so hard to watch mm -hmm. like sometimes you accidentally swipe into it or something and it's like like it just hurts like it really attacks like it's mm -hmm. been really hard on me and that's why I was like super curious and yeah I don't know I don't know how to feel like I feel so emotional there's just so many things going on in the world that like yeah. on top of each other plus like when you're by yourself so much because of quarantine or staying at home it's just yeah. like you really think about like oh I'm eating this or when you go out you don't really think about anything right when you eat out mm -hmm. but when you're at home it's like okay like this is what I have in my fridge and maybe we can improve it or change it right mm -hmm. yeah for sure yeah I just think the health benefits overall are also like a major other thing to consider there and Huge. I really feel like the earth just gives us what we need <laughs> you exactly. know like there's to me it's kind of I, I'm always shocked when I think about how there's so many amazing plants and flavors and all these kinds of things that we can eat and people choose to eat dead animals you know what I mean like uh, yeah that's fair yeah <laughs> and just the fact that all of the water and grains and resources that go into feeding these animals that we eat we could be giving to people it's yeah. just so that's weird. what I was thinking too is like Wild. I didn't know that <laughs> I don't know why but the two and like they didn't come together for me where like they need water <laughs> and then like yeah. what they eat needs water and I'm like yes. I don't know why that didn't connect yeah. if that makes sense because yeah. like we could be giving that to people who need water exactly like, exactly water's so hard to get right now yeah and the land too and then not even talking about also like the oceans oh it's a my whole gosh. other thing too a whole Did, other have thing. you seen the latest documentary on Netflix Seaspiracy no it just came out hey I haven't yeah seen it yet. oh my gosh yeah. I I started last night I watched half of it and yeah. oh my goodness I'm already like I'm already like I'm I'm cutting sashimi out of my diet like right? I'm just done <laughs> I'm, like if know. anyone's gonna eat some kind of meat in this house it'll be my dog and that's it right <laughs> like <laughs> yeah she needs it I guess and like yeah, that's yeah. fine but um yeah have you watched Game Changers I have yeah oh what that's do you think crazy. of that I thought yeah, it was no, good was, personally yeah no it was good it it kind of reminded me again it's that similar notes as what the health like just how you can oh, find okay. all these things you need you know for your body yeah it's just a matter of you know putting your mind to it there and you can be a bodybuilder or whatever exactly there you go. <laughs> yeah there's like people like lifting them um, like 500 pounds and they're vegan yeah. like yeah. people think if you're a vegetarian or vegan you're skinny like a stick and yeah. you have no strength and can't do anything but that's yeah. not true at all no, you can get protein from other sources. You can get your fiber from other sources. Exactly. You can be um, a CrossFit athlete as a vegan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not like there's just so many stereotypes out there that make yeah. it very hard for them. Yeah. Stereotypes sure. are really difficult. And like looking at all of like vegetarianism and veganism now, I like, I obviously was stereotyping people too, I guess, in my mm -hmm. head. But when you, when you learn and get educated through documentaries or YouTube or like us talking or listening to podcasts like this, mm -hmm. that's that's where like people's minds will like hopefully open up a bit. I hope so. Yeah. yeah, for sure. There's so many benefits and, you know, you can pick one of those main three that I talked about and all of those would be good. Yeah. yeah. Do, do you mind naming a few benefits that, like right at the top of your head or anything like that? Yeah. So uh, for one thing, like I was saying, like the health benefits are crazy. Um, I feel like Ever since I switched over, I remember certainly feeling more energetic and just not disgusting after I've eaten something. You know how after you have like fast food, you feel like total crap. Like I don't get that anymore. That's good. <laughs> and I have more energy. I have less fatigue because I'm putting, because I'm not putting those things in my body, I'm putting better things in my body, like whole grains, plants, fruits, things like that. It's like I have more energy this way. Um 
and I don't know I just feel just feel better there's a um, lot of protein and veggies that people don't there is realize. like people don't think about it I think mm-hmm. that there's again going back to like historical kinds of things is there was that this one period in a history in America where protein was like what makes you strong protein is like what a man needs to be strong and then they just started creating those like narratives and then therefore it kind of carried on and everyone just thinks you need protein to be strong but you other, need other things you need like fiber and all these other things calories whatever right yeah you so, need carbs <laughs> like people yeah, take carbs out but you need exactly it to burn fat it's like yeah. I'm not a nutrition expert but like protein like shakes and stuff they're not necessary they're fun to have once in a while if you're really tired or you've been Mm -hmm. overworked sure but like you don't need it every day or five times a day yeah actually and like you need carbs like I don't understand why people can't anyways that's a different topic but yeah (laughs) I just like what would your top three tips be if you if someone wanted to go from like me who wants to go into vegetarianism Yeah. So I would say um, the first step is exactly what you're doing, which is educating yourself, looking at research, ideally peer reviewed research Mm -hmm. articles, things like that, not just stuff that pops up on Facebook, (laughs) Um, documentaries, things like that. Um, Another tip would be to look online for inspiration for recipes. There are so many amazing recipes out there and just like recommendations from chefs and things like that. There's, I could even like share some of them later um some instagrams and things like that because you'll get so much inspiration yeah or like i think there's like a tasty vegan or tasty vegetarian account from buzzfeed that you can look at so many good ideas it'll get you more inspired and more motivated to cook things that are like that um i think those would be my top two tips um and then yeah just you know don't be so hard on yourself just try your best you know like if you lapse that's okay just keep you know keep going forward um if you want to make it easier for you you can go to the grocery store and usually in the frozen vegetable section there's some alternatives like the chicken nuggets and patties and things like that you could try if you're having trouble with inspiration and then just slowly trying to add more vegetables to your diet and you should be good I think yeah those are great tips thank you For sure. Yeah, I think the biggest issue is lifestyle change and people mm-hmm. need to realize with fitness, with health, anything, you can't jump from one to another. Like That's you can't awful. go from zero to 100. Like you mm-hmm. actually have to take your time and be like kind to yourself because you will, mm-hmm. re- like you said, lapse. And then you just want to keep moving forward if that's your goal. Like don't yeah. just fully give up. Don't give up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because like, I mean, if we're going to try to compare the process of lifestyle to from for veganism, I would say like when someone works out, they're so motivated January 1st, they work out for two weeks, exactly. right? Like so well. And yeah. then all of a sudden it's done. And then all their gains are gone. And mm-hmm. that's kind of like the same where like you just got to, okay, January 1st, yeah, I'm going to work out, but you got to be kind to yourself and slowly get there. Mm-hmm. And then it'll just become a lifestyle. And then that will be better for like your long-term health, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Just yeah. Uh, don't give up. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you have anything else you want to say? Um, you know, I don't, I don't think so. I would, you know, encourage any listeners, if you're thinking about it, to do whatever research you can. Watch some documentaries on Netflix. Um, incorporate more vegetables into your diet. Veggies are delicious. Like They look good, good. too. They, yeah, they are. They're colorful. They're delicious. I <laughs> so love <vegetables>. colorful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did yes. you know there's different colored cauliflower? Yeah, I did. Oh, I saw like, those. What the heck? Yeah, yeah. Like, because Frozen Bros just opened and they yeah. have different colored cauliflower. And I was like, so what cool. is this? It's so weird. It's so Anyways, cool. that's just like yeah. not anything, but yeah. No, that's awesome. <laughs> but yeah, um, it was nice talking to you. Yes. And catching nice up. Well. And yeah, I'll have everything that she recommends down below. And she will send me some other stuff that's a little bit easier to digest on social media. Mm-hmm. And yeah, if you have questions, you can for sure reach out to Dana. Thank you for listening. (laughs) Thank you for listening.